Just when it feels like there's a lull in the Wheel of Time news to talk about, we get some more information. This past week, Amazon and the Wheel of Time showrunners released a video highlighting the completion of filming for season two of the show. Now we have some super interesting things to talk about from that video, as well as more casting, including some major Sean Chan characters. We also have some important announcements on the upcoming WatCon Wheel of Time convention. All of that today and more on the weekly Wheel of Time news. Now today's video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers through the shadow rising the fourth book in the series. If you haven't read the fourth book, you might be spoiled on some things, you've been warned. So we'll go ahead and kick off the Wheel of Time news today with a story that comes courtesy of my good friends over at WattSeries.com. They have reported on a number of new casting choices that they have discovered, one of which is a fairly important character. Now Watt Series is reporting that there are four new castings. We'll talk about each of them one at a time here, saving the most important of them for last. I will preface that none of this is confirmed by Amazon, so it is still just speculation until then. First, we have actress Elena Fokina, who they are reporting has been cast as a Suldom for season two. Now, Elena has worked as an actress, a dancer, a choreographer, and a dance teacher for the last 20 years. And in terms of her acting credits, she is most known for her role in Suspiria, playing the role of Olga. Now, Watt Series is also reporting that she was in Morocco recently, and she was there around the time of episodes five and six, that they were being filmed, so it's likely she's in those episodes. The next two casting announcements are for mystery roles, uh, as they were unable to attach them to any specific part other than that they're attached to the Wheel of Time as a project. Now, the first of those parts goes for Adrian Boucher. He's a Zimbabwe-born actor who is best known for his role in The Last Kingdom. He's had a really extensive career, though, mostly playing action-oriented parts in movies and in television shows. Now, while we don't know what role he's playing, it's very likely he's playing some physical role that he's being brought into due to his experience with action and physical roles. That seems to be primarily what he does. The second of the unknown parts is for Maha Simonson. Now she's a model and an actress who was born in Paris. She's had some roles in some fairly large projects in the past, even if she had small parts in them. That includes Treadstone, The King's Man, and Emily in Paris. Now again, it's completely unknown who she could be playing, uh, it could be a very small part, and it's doubtful that it's a major role, just because she doesn't seem to have the acting experience to back that up. And typically they have cast people with a lot of experience in some of the bigger roles, so I guess we'll see. So now we're on to the last of the castings, and probably the most important to the story. WattSeries.com is reporting that actor Daniel Francis has been cast as Shan Chan High Lord Turok. Now, if you recall, Turok is the man who oversees the Shan Chan invasion force that invades at Falm, and he's also the blade master that ran fights at the end of the Great Hunt, right before he goes up and fights a Shamael in the sky. Now, Daniel Francis is a classically trained actor who is most known for his role as Dr. Facilier in Once Upon a Time. Now, it's unknown how large of a role Turok is going to play in the story of season two of the show. In season one, characters like Eamon Valda received expanded screen time. While Turok isn't a major part in the books, it's possible that with the focus on the Shan Chan for season two, he's going to be set up as more like the head bad dude. It's possible. It's also possible that he'll have a fairly small part in the story. So we'll have to see when the show comes out or when we get more information, which is hopefully soon. However, before moving on to talk more about the clip released by Amazon, let me thank the video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the number one provider of VPN services in the world. Now, what is a VPN, you might ask? Well, a VPN acts as a third party between you and your internet provider. Why is that important? Well, it protects your browsing experience from those that would track you, uh, track what you do, where you go, all of that. And I hate to break it to you, but your internet service provider literally logs every site you go to. A VPN prevents that. It also prevents nefarious entities from gathering information on you while you're online as well as the added perk that you get to log into the internet from other countries. So you can see Netflix or Amazon Prime in another country, which is a great perk. Now VPNs are really important if you use the internet and I have an aching suspicion that you do because you're watching this video. Now they're normally very cheap, they're even cheaper now. Because you're one of my viewers, NordVPN is gonna give you a massive discount on the service. Just click the link in the description of the video, sign up for NordVPN, it's something that everybody should have and now it's even cheaper. Again, click that link in the description, get signed up, 
Thank you to NordVPN, and let's get back to the news. All right, so let's get to the main news, and that, of course, is the season two wrap video that Amazon released. This past Wednesday, Amazon released a video commemorating the wrap of season two of the production. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and play the clip here, and sorry for the low quality, it just wasn't released on widescreen and high quality on YouTube or anything, it's just on Twitter, but here you go. Stand by, nice and quiet. Rolling, rolling out. Sounds beat. Action. Okay, cut. Well, that's a wrap on season two. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Yeah. So. There's quite a bit to unpack there. I'm gonna go through this frame by frame and hit the important bits. We first kick off the clip looking at what I can guess are areas that they were shooting for the show. This first area is a wooded plain area that has seems to have reddish soil. I'm not sure what that location could be, but my guesses would be either somewhere near Prague or the mysterious filming location in Italy that we've heard about. The next shot is from Morocco at a specific site that we're gonna talk more about later in this clip, so we'll get there in a minute. But we move to the season two table read, or at least the table that they did the table read at. Uh, we can't really make out any of the name tags here, so we're gonna come back to this again and talk about it later in the clip. Next, we get some shooting inside the White Tower set. Now, this is a set that they built at Jordan Studios, and in the background here, we can see what might be the mistress of novice's office. I say that because it's the it's a desk, but it doesn't look like the Omerlin study that we saw in season one. So we then cut to this shot of one of the designers creating a mold for a man's face. And I say a mold because this is a type of mold that they use to create masks or prosthetics. They're making the, the frame of it underneath it. So it's interesting to see what this could be for. The lines on the head look like tattoos possibly. And the question I have is why would a mask be necessary for tattoos? unless there may be brands. Uh, I would imagine that this is something Sean Chan related though. I'm very curious what you think. Let me know in the comments of the video. Uh, we then move back to the table read and they've done a great job of blurring out the scripts. So there's nothing here to try and read. It's also very difficult to pick out who some of these people are. This right here might be Guy Roberts who's playing Uno, but it's very difficult to tell. This person right here, we're gonna talk more about in a moment. So here we are back in the White Tower filming again. And this appears to be the same room that we saw earlier. Again, my guess is that it's Shiryam's study, or at least the Mistress of Novice's study. This appears to be from episode two, as we can see episode two on the clapper there. I love how intricate these designs here on the walls and the stone that they used. It, it just makes the walls look amazing. The White Tower is so detailed, I love it. Here's a wider shot of the same area and seemingly at the same time. Behind this camera here though is Zoe Robbins, who's playing Nynaeve. Now you can see she's wearing a white dress that appears to match the accepted dresses we saw in season one. I don't think that's a novice dress just based on the costuming that again, we saw in season one. We then move to this shot of the deserts of Morocco and these men here on horseback. Now you can also see this person right here that many have speculated is pot on fame, but I'm not so sure. It very well could be, uh, but the coat is far shorter than last season's jacket. And I just don't get that feeling from the way he's standing that that's him. I could be wrong though, either way, these people uh, appear to be in and around Falma, or at least the area that we know they've been filming for that. Here we come now back to the production designers making swords for the show. Now these appear to be being mass produced as they're working on many of them. And given that that's the case, I'd assume that these are either swords for the Shan Chan or maybe even Tyr. There don't appear to be any markings that indicate who they would be for, uh, but they do look somewhat ornate, like there's been some thought put into the design. So they're just not a generic sword. I don't feel like they're Shan Chan swords only because based on what we saw of the Shan Chan a little bit last season, I would have expected something a little bit more intricate from the way they're doing the design around that, but I could be wrong. I would also assume that these shots here are inside Jordan Studios at Prague. We know they built a place there to build props, a blacksmith, all that. So I would assume that's where they're at. Now the next shot is more of the same, but with a little bit more perspective on the room. Now, here is where we get to some really interesting stuff. Here is a major scene filmed in the desert somewhere, and they're using a very peculiar looking wheel prop and a throne. 
there appears to be someone strapped to the wheel and the throne is facing it. And I have absolutely no idea what this might be for. And I can only speculate as there's nothing in the books that mirrors this at all that I can think of. My best guess involves a dream sequence or something to do with the Shan Chan. It seems extremely odd that a throne would be built with nothing around it simply to stare at a wheel in the middle of the desert. If there was no person strapped to that wheel, I'd assume it was a portal stone. But given that there is somebody strapped to it, uh, I guess it's some type of torture device or a stockade of some sort, in my opinion. The reason I think it could be a dream sequence is this appears to be the type of the thing that a Forsaken might do in a constructed dream sequence, like building a throne in the middle of nowhere in the desert, staring at a wheel with nobody else around. It just seems sort of surreal, so it could be a dream. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments of the video. Now we move back to the table read, and we can start to piece together the cast and who is present. Here we have Priyanka Bose as Alana, of course, with fruit in front of her, a very fitting. Then we have Kira Coveney, who is playing Elaine Tricand this season. And then, of course, we have Zoe Robbins here as Nynaeve. Yosha Stradowski as Rand right behind her. And Rosamund Pike as Moraine. And then, of course, Marcus Rutherford as Perrin behind her. Now, it's very difficult to tell who is behind him. So at that point, we really can't tell. We then move to a close-up shot of that wheel with the straps hanging from it. And they are certainly making a point of showing us this, uh, and specifically the bonds. I truly have no idea of what this could be, but I'm certainly interested in finding out. It is interesting that they're making that, though, front and center in this advertising. It feels very similar to the way they were advertising the Waygate. And, of course, that wasn't super important in the show, but it was something that I think that the showrunners thought was really cool and a, and a nice design. So I think we could be seeing something like that here. We now have a shot back here in the prop space, and it appears that they're not all working on swords there. Uh, it's difficult to tell what this item is here and what he's working on. My guess is maybe it's a scepter or something. There's also a box here that appears to have a dragon engraved on the side. There's also something ornate carved on top of that box, but again, I'm not sure what that would be for. The Horn of Valir does not look like it would fit in there, so I'm not sure what this would be for. We have a shot of that same scene from earlier, at least another scene in the desert. Now, this uh, right here appears to be director Maha Vervarillo, but I am not 100% sure of that. We also get a shot here of Daniel Henney, who plays Lan, walking to a plane with Rosamund Pike, who plays Moraine. Now, they appear to be leaving Morocco at this point. They say, that's a wrap for season two. And in the background, you can see right here the symbol for Royal Air Morocco. That's an airline from Morocco. Shocker. Then, finally, we get this last shot of the completion of the table read and everybody clapping. We are seeing the other side of the table now with Madeline Madden right here, who is playing Egwene. Taylor Napier, who plays Alana's warder Maskim, right here, and then a mystery woman who we saw briefly in the other shot. Now, it is not clear who she is or who she's playing, but she is sitting at the table, which means she's had lines to read. It's possible that she could be a wise one or an Aes Sedai or really anybody, and I know that doesn't narrow it down. Maybe she's a version of Adilius and Van Dien. But that's the clip that we got. It doesn't give us tons to talk about, and it wasn't by any stretch a trailer, but it's nice to see something from the production team to give some love to the community. Let's hope that we get more content here in the future and some stuff for us to obsess over for the next couple months before the show comes out. All right, let's end things here with a quick update on WatCon. For those who are not aware, there is a new Wheel of Time fan convention starting this year in Columbus, Ohio on July 8th through the 10th. I'm one of the folks who's helping put on the convention. We are coming up on a month now from the convention. We are really excited, and we've got some big announcements coming here for WatCon here in the very near future. First of all, I want to let everybody know that the hotel is filling up fast. If you are planning on going to the convention, make sure to book your hotel room now, as they may run out of room in the main hotel. There are others around it, but it's always going to feel better for you to be in the hotel, and it's cheaper. We have a group rate for the convention, and you definitely want to be at the hotel, like I said. You can book the hotel without having to pay up front. Just head to WatCon.com and get more information there. Make sure you read the fine print, though, on when you do have to pay. We are also going to be releasing the final panel schedule here and event schedule for the convention uh, in the very near future, within the next week or two, as well as the virtual ticket option. Here in the next few weeks, we'll have a massive information drop on the Dusty Wheel with hopefully some special guests that you will not want to miss. Look for more information soon. Uh, anyways, let me know in the comments of the video what you thought of the teaser clip from Amazon. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as well if you like Wheel of Time focused content. That's what I make here. Look for a top 10 video coming out this week. And then thank you again to the sponsor of the video, NordVPN. Check out NordVPN by clicking the link in the description of the video. Thank you to all my patrons for making this possible. 
possible, consider checking out my Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Uh, you can find that link in the description of the video as well. And lastly, check out one of these videos here you might like. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace out.